So welcome back to the show and now I have the privilege to have Denise Duffield Thomas with me. Hi Denise, how are you? Hello, how are you? I am great, I'm great. And you, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. It's really nice to speak to you. I'm just, I can't believe the technology we have now that we can speak to each other from opposite sides of the world. It's fabulous. Yeah, especially now that we know that uh, there will be something like uh, 15,000 people listening to this from wherever in the world, which is just great, you know. Wow, that's cool. So you are based in Australia. I am now, yes. I've been back in Australia for a year, but um, previous to that, I spent nine years in London. And, you know, so I'm very, I love Europe so much. And now it's great being back in Australia as well. That's great. That's great. So um, you are the author of Lucky Beach, and I'm not really sure how I can do this on the show without beeping every two words, but that would be okay. So can you tell us a bit more about how you came to, to writing this book? Sure. So Lucky Bitch is the story of how I manifested, among other things, but six months all expenses paid travel around the world. And it's a book, I guess, about the law of attraction. Um, but I, when I found out about the law of attraction, about the secret and things like that, I loved it, but I actually didn't know what to do you know, what practical things to do from it. And so I did a lot of study around the law of attraction. And um, the way that I tested it out was um, I wanted to go traveling. That was a big goal for me. And um, with a lot of practical applications of the law of attraction, I manifested this trip to go traveling around the world for six months, completely free. And so I thought, hey, that's a good book to write about. And um, and so I asked the universe, okay, send me a good book title. And that's when Lucky Bitch came up because I found that with my clients and other people, when good things happen to us, sometimes people are not so happy. And from the outside, it looks like luck, but actually, you know, it takes a lot of hard work to be lucky and to have things happen like that. So um, that is what Lucky Bitch is about. How to be lucky? <laughs> yeah, how to be lucky, <laughs> <laughs> which is which, which is great. Everybody wants to be lucky, I guess, and um, it is something that uh, everybody is striving to. But you, you said that you analyze um, the secret, so and you said that you didn't really know what to do for when you when you read or when you watch the secret. Well, yeah. What what have you been doing that is different from 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 this? Well, when I I think when I watched the secret at the beginning, I thought it was just. It was only your thoughts, and I didn't. I didn't know what I could actually do in the real world, like practical things to do in the real world. So I'm a Virgo. I like to know what I need to do, and I just thought I was doing it wrong. I thought, well, my my thoughts just. I can't. I'm not disciplined enough to do it. Um, and so what I like to do is make things incredibly practical. And what I did um, with the honeymoon testers, for example, as soon as I found out about the opportunity, one of the very practical things I did was put the whole trip in my diary, in my calendar, um, which, you know, how practical can you get? But what I had to do was look at all the different things that could have stopped me from winning that competition. And one of them was I saw over the six months, I went, okay, well, I've got two weddings to go to. Um, I've got to organize my flat. What am I going to do with my cats? Um, you know, there were a lot of practical things to go into. Whereas back when I first learned about the law of attraction, I thought you just had to kind of sit around and meditate on it. And what I've realized now is there are so many practical things you can do. And it's really about taking the action, but it's the action with the right intention behind it. And, um, and manifesting is like a muscle. Like when you want to lose weight, if you go to the gym once a year on New Year's Day, you're not going to get the result that you want. And it's the same with manifesting. You know, you really have to take action, not just thinking about it, but action every single day to to make things happen. And when they do, it seems like magic to the outside, but it's really not. You know, you've really, you've created it. Okay, yeah. So you said that um, manifesting is like a muscle, so it's it's really where persistence comes in but a muscle of, of doing what really in, um, in more precisely yeah so what what would you actually do every day yeah, yeah, yeah question, cool yeah. What, what, what yeah do you do? is it really visually 
visualization? Is it um, a meditation? Is it uh, um, restating your, your intention, your desire, or really doing what you have done, which is really completely preparing your trip as if you were already sure that you will go? Well, my philosophy is throw everything at it. Like, throw everything you know. And yeah, everything. <laughs> so, um, I would assume that most people listening to this know about personal development and they've, they've read personal development books and they've been to a conference or two or whatever. And what I've really noticed that it actually doesn't matter so much what you do. As long as you have a huge intention around what it is and throw everything you know at it. And I'll give you some examples on this. So, um, I have a five-step process that I teach and it's pretty practical and it's also pretty straightforward. So, step number one is to declutter everything. And and this is related to your goal. So, if you wanted to manifest more money, you would focus on decluttering money. And there are two parts to it. One is decluttering your self-beliefs, decluttering your emotions. So, it could be doing forgiveness work from the past or it could be um, cleaning up, you know, problems that you've had in the past with money, repaying debts, um, doing something that's very, very um, symbolic of clearing the past around it. The other thing is actually doing stuff in the physical world. So, um, if you want to manifest a relationship, for example, you start with decluttering your bedroom. And um, one of my clients that I worked with who's getting married next month after being single for seven years, she actually had to declutter her bed. You know, she had to, um, she realized that, you know, she sleeps with her dog. Her dog is on the other side of the bed and she had to declutter her bed. You know, she had to make space for a relationship to come in. She had to buy a bedside um you know, like drawers on the other side because I was saying to her, well, if you do have a relationship, where is he going to put his stuff when he sleeps over? <laughs> you know, so it's very, very practical, this decluttering part. Um, and that could be something that you do on a daily basis. So, it could be when you get into your office, you declutter your your desk. It could be that you clean out your wallet every single day or every single week. Um, but it's just getting to that space all the time where there's nothing that's holding you back, whether it's emotional, physical, anything. Um, and for for a lot of people, there is a lot of physical declutter in uh, sorry, physical clutter in their body, as in their things that they're not taking care of. Um, and you might think, well, what what has that got to do with anything? But if you've got a toothache, for example, and you've been have you had that toothache for six months? It's very hard to concentrate on what you want when you've got a bad tooth. And it, you might not even be consciously aware of it all of the time, but it's something that's just there running in the background, like a computer that has too many back, back, you know, programs running in the background. All of that is emotional, energetic clutter. And really, you can't skip that step. I would say that's the most important thing. Um, to do so, if you if you think about what what it is that you want to manifest, whatever area it is, sit down and write a list of okay, what are some what are ten things that are stopping me from getting this, and what's the very next practical action I can take okay, but to get rid of that. But usually, the, the the belief or the things that are in our way are things that are completely subconscious. So, how, how do you know what is con- what what you can do, or how what you what you what you're aware of? and things that you're not aware of. Yeah, I totally agree. Once you've taken care of the physical stuff, you have to look at the self-belief, the emotion behind it. And um, that's why focusing on one goal in particular will help because you can go, okay, you have to become very self-aware and look at, okay, what what have I got that's going to be holding me back from my money goal, whether it's to become a millionaire or to have a business or whatever, and be very, very self-aware about it. I actually like going into the negative in that in that space. So, um, it could be what's hold, what's really holding me back from being a millionaire? What, um, what self-beliefs have I got? What, um, what have I learned from my parents about money? Or you could start a list, what are 10 reasons why I can't be a millionaire? And you don't want to focus focus on this for a long time, but it's really just to uncover 
what's holding you back, what self-beliefs are. Um, and then you throw everything you know at it. So I really favor things like emotional freedom technique, EFT. Um, you could use someone's um, methodology like Katie Byron and her – what's her methodology called? Is it called The Way or something? Oh, the Work. The work, exactly. So you could focus that on it. Um, and I think most people who are listening have probably learned a million and one methodologies and different things. Sometimes it's even setting an intention. So when I wanted to look at my money stuff and I went, universe, I love winning all this stuff. It's amazing. But I'd really like to earn some money this year. <laughs> like, can you please help me overcome my money blocks? And then... All these things started happening. I, I met somebody who was a coach who her speciality was helping people deal with energetic money blocks, you know, but I had to ask the question. I had to say to the universe, look, I've got a problem here. <laughs> Send me some help um, and throw everything you know at it. Throw everything you know at it. So EFT is a brilliant one to start with um, and you can always go to YouTube and just put in EFT money and see what comes up and, and really set an intention that you're going to overcome that particular barrier. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's really, really good when you when you know that there are s some blocks. And even if you don't know, you, you can still tap on... Um, because uh, I had the chance to interview both Brad Yates and Margaret Lynch. And uh, sometimes there are blocks that we don't know what they are. So he, he was just saying, this thing that is blocking me. And uh, that also works very well. Definitely. So you you then managed to um, to really get clear of what you wanted and also clear, or what you say, declutter um, some of the belief and what was in the way. You also mentioned uh, forgiveness before. Uh, yes. Yeah. How powerful is forgiveness? You say yes. <laughs> <sighs> forgiveness is non-negotiable. It really is. It's it's probably the most powerful tool. I've ever come across in the personal development world. Um, and, you know, there are so many stories about how forgiveness not only repairs relationships, but I think more importantly than that, forgiveness is the gift that you give yourself. Um, when you forgive the past and you forgive yourself for your role in the past, it gives you permission on an energetic level to succeed. It's, it's probably the worst clutter that people hold around is resentments and pain and anger from the past. It's so important. And when I work with someone one-to-one, -one, um, it's we always start with forgiveness, no matter what their problem is, no matter what their issue is, whatever challenge they have. And you can always forgive more. So even if you've done it before, um, usually once people have forgiven other people in their life, they really have to look at themselves and forgive themselves for... Um, mistakes they've made in the past so for example again maybe your focus is money or health or whatever you look at okay what do I need to forgive myself for what what have I been really irresponsible for with money in the past where have I screwed up um you know if you've had a business and you've I mean most of us who are entrepreneurs have 10 failed businesses behind us um you know forgive yourself for for failures you've had be gentle and kind to yourself um, one of my chapters in my book is called Get Your Boobs On Board. <laughs> I hope no one's offended by that. Get Your Boobs On Board. And part of it is about being very clear to every cell in your body um, that you are going forward and that you are trying to create something. And if you've got um, resentments to, towards your own body, imagine all of those cells and all of that energy dragging you down, turning against you. So body forgiveness, I think, is is a beautiful one too. If you feel, if you feel like you've forgiven everyone else in the world and you've forgiven all your mistakes and all that kind of stuff, go inwards and start with your toes and work your way up and really forgive and love your body, um, especially for women, but men that that works as well. But you know, get every cell of your body on board with your dreams and saying yes, we're we're helping you, we're going forward with you. It's very important. Yeah, I know that for forgiveness is is really really key here. And you're right. At some stage, we we arrive to the point where um, we realize that um, that we are taking more responsibility, and, and that's a time where we have to forgive ourselves because else we will not be able to um, to move forward without without this forgiveness for for us. Yes, it's the gift you give yourself. Yeah, completely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then, so this is really the process that you have been using so f for yourself then to to manifest everything in your life, but also the process you are taking your clients uh, by the hand to, to help them to manifest. Absolutely. And I mean, step number one is the decluttering part, but the other steps are actually quite straightforward. So step number two is actually know what you want, decide what you want. And I really like to encourage a daily goal setting process. And I'm not precious about it. I don't think there's one way to write down goals, but I think you could mix it up. One day you could just write, you know, if I could have anything this week, what would it be? Or um, you could do be, do, have everything you want to be in your life, do in your life and have in your life. Um, because most people really don't write down their goals or they do it once a year or they think about them in their head, you know, once a year. So, Writing down your goals, I mean, it puts you in what, the top 1% of the population or something, writing down your goals regularly. Okay, so you, you are doing this every day then. You're writing one goal, one specific goal every day. But isn't this going in contradiction to some people who are saying that you have to let go of your intention? Um. Well, you know what? I wouldn't say I do mine every day. I would say maybe I do mine three, three or four times a week when I'm really on fire I do write them down every week. So, you know, the attachment thing, that, that comes later in my process because it is important to, to not have attachment to your goals. But I think um, the process of goal setting is just to be very clear to the universe and what you're playing for. And you don't have to make it a, you know, a really complicated process every time. It could be just a, you know, you just quickly doodle them down in the morning um, when you get up or you just quickly write them down at night. It's not a precious process at all. But most of us have unspoken desires. And it's like we're calling up Pizza Hut or, you know, the local pizza place and saying, send me what you think I would like. Send me any type of pizza. Just guess what kind of pizza I would like. And when we don't really have a strong intention around what we're playing for random stuff shows up really random stuff and then we think well how what what's the deal but if it's unspoken how is the universe supposed to know what to deliver to you um but you don't have to get really precious about it you can do your smart goals you know make them perfect every time but i i don't think the universe is requiring perfection from us but they, it does want to know what do you want? What can I send you? <laughs> what can I send you? So that's that's step number two. Yeah. Um, step number three. <laughs> step number three. No, that's okay. Um, step number three is to surround yourself with positivity and really align to your goals. This is where things like dream boards come in. Um, I love dream boards, you know, doing a, f a representation of everything you're playing for. And actually, if, um, if people come to my site, um, which is denisestuffieldthomas.com, um, if you sign up for my newsletter, I'll send you a little um, video. I'll send you all these steps, actually, but I'll send you a little video about how to make a dream board using Picasa, which is a, a free software by Google. It makes these beautiful dream boards. But it's it's more than that. It's making every part of your day aligned to what it is that you want. So, um, when my husband and I were had applied for the honeymoon testers trip, which took us all around the world, um, in the lead up to that, before we even won it, we just put as many things into our day as possible. So, my password was ultimate job. Was w w That was the name of the competition. Um, I had a reminder in my phone, which came up every day at nine o'clock and said, you know, something like, you're about to head off on an adventure around the world for six months. Um, I changed the name of my husband, Mark, in my phone to be Mark Ultimate Job Buddy. Um, so all of these things compounded because, you know, I mean, most people have probably heard about law of attraction stuff. There's something like if you visualize your goal for 17 seconds at a time or something like that and really have that intention, you know, it will really create ripples throughout the universe. Well, I just didn't have the discipline to do that all the time. So I put all these triggers into my life, into my day, where every time I saw that thing, whether it was having to type in my goal as my password or having my dream board come up on my desktop or Mark 
texting me and his name popping up or my little reminder on my phone, all of these things compounded that I probably got those little 17 seconds without even thinking about it. I didn't have to be disciplined around it. Um, On a broader sense, this is everything that you put into your world. So, it's the people that you hang around with, the the movies and the TV that you watch. Um, When I don't watch TV, I find I become luckier. I don't know why. I think it's just, you know, not having all those extra messages um, come into my life. But, you know, there's so many different things. This is another thing about throw everything at it. You know, everything that you know, affirmations, affirmations, which are great. It's affirmations in the form of a question. Um, mind movies, doing doing your dream boards, doing using Pinterest to make dream boards. All of those things help and they all definitely compound to getting you aligned to the feeling of being in your in your dream, in the feeling of being in your goal. Um, so that's step number three. And if you've got any, do you have any questions on that one? Uh, not really. I was just listening to this and I found that uh, the thing with the password is um, is great because we all have to type our password at least 10 or 20 times a day and uh, if every time we type our password is a smile coming on our face I think that uh, this is just a way to remind us but also to think about our goal and in, in a very positive way which is absolutely great. absolutely I like putting things in that are kind of automatic because I'm I'm a little bit easy <laughs> so I need to make things like that very easy for myself you know, it doesn't require any effort because you have to do it anyway. And instead of typing in, you know, the name of your cat, type in the name of your goal. And um, my client who's getting married next month, who we work together to manifest her husband, for six months she typed in, you know, married by December, married by December. And she missed it by three months. She's getting married in March, but she doesn't care. <laughs> Is she, you know, and... That might have made no difference at all in the world, but it could have. Each time, as you said, it put a smile on her face. It reminded her of, you know, her visualization about getting married and finding her soulmate. And who knows what ripples that created, that one small action, um, as well as everything else. So, um, step you, number... Oh, you, go on, you sorry. Never, you never felt that uh, by doing all this stuff, by throwing everything to this, that at some stage you... How can I say this? You, your life was just working on, on manifesting rather than living your life? No, not at all because there were only tiny little things. And it's not like I sat in, in meditation for 12 hours a day. I just didn't have the time. But because I had these little automatic things and, you know, it could have been small things like on my commute. You know, I really think if you're commuting on a train or a bus or whatever, you could listen to a positive podcast. You could read a positive book instead of sitting there feeling miserable about your life. And for the couple of years before, I had felt miserable about my life. I lived in London. I commuted 45 minutes and I would sit there and go, God, I hate London. (laughs) God, I hate this weather. (laughs) God, I hate this weather. And actually, when I turned my intention to travel – And I actually didn't know about the competition for a long time. I was just thinking about travel. It was pleasurable to sit there and daydream about traveling. It was pleasurable to sit there and read a book about, um, you know, either positivity or about um, other people's travel adventures. So, it wasn't like I spent my whole time visualizing. I was enjoying my life, but it was just these little things in there that that made a, a big difference, I think, in how I felt and that's the most important thing. It's how you feel. It's always about how you feel. And you definitely want to live your good life now. You don't want to wait. Um, So, step number four is about taking inspired action. And when I work with someone one-to-one and I say, what what, what action are you going to take from now? And they go, I'm going to go and research something. And I go, no, no, you're not. That is not an inspired action. Researching something does not send ripples throughout the universe that you're serious. So, an inspired action is something that is a little bit scary. It's a little bit bold. It could be something like making a phone call to somebody who you know um, can can help you. Someone, it's a little bit scary for you to call. It could be putting in an application for something. It could be um, sending a a pitch to somebody 
you know, if you want to write a book or if you want to um, write an article for someone, it's something that's actually going to send ripples throughout the universe and, and, and actually show that you're serious. I think this is the most important thing is to show that you're serious, I think. Yes, absolutely. So she's putting some skin in the game. And let me give you a really quick story about this. So I was working with someone. Um, she wanted to manifest going to this particular conference in New York and really desperately wanted to go. And she didn't have the money for it. And so we went through all the stuff. Okay, we, we looked at, okay, well, you know, is there anything you need to declutter around this? So the very first action I got her to do was to put, um, put it in her calendar put the conference in her calendar and she went oh Denise you oh it's my mother-in-law's 80th birthday on that weekend and I was like well how badly do you want to go to this conference she goes yeah I really 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 want to be there so I said okay you're going to have to take some action here that's a little bit scary so you're going to have to cancel that birthday party you're going to have to reschedule it and she was like well shouldn't I do that when I know that I'm actually going to the conference? And I was like, no, you're going. Now you have to show the universe that you're serious about going. So she had to call up her husband and say to him, we're going to have to move this party. And it was an action that did send ripples throughout the universe because the very next day she had um, two checks in the post, unexpected checks in the post. She had two new clients that came on board, so she had the money. And then her husband, who she said has is the biggest tight person in the world with his money, he said to her, I'm going to give you some money to go to this conference as well. All of that happened because she had to take a very inconvenient action which was cancelling a party. She had to show that she was serious. She had to put some skin in the game. And, um, you know, that's another example about why decluttering is so important because she probably didn't realise that the party was on until she literally decluttered her calendar. <laughs> she made some space for it. Which is quite interesting because um, I found out that one of my blogs, um, you probably don't know this, but uh, I am a single dad, but... Um, um, I was always scared that um, being successful meant that the life of my daughter would change so much and uh, that I would not be around her um, all the time. And um, just by having this on the very unconscious level, this was blocking me from being very, more, much more successful than w w what I am now. Yes. Yeah. And so what did you do to, to declutter that self-belief? Uh, I just said that it was okay and uh, I looked at other people who had children also and uh, who were traveling and speaking around the world and coaching people uh, and um, I also um, looked at my life before when I was working as, as a consultant when I, when I was traveling a lot and everything was always possible so I just reinforce this aspect that uh, my daughter was always fine with this and in fact, that was a new opportunity for her. So just by by shifting and, and by doing the research and reaffirming re my own belief on this, mm. that this is okay, um, this opened a lot of things. I think you said something there that's very key as well. It's having, it's having role models. It's seeing that things are, it can be true for you. You know, so looking at other entrepreneurs who have kids, and, you know, an action could be, if, if this is resonating for people, is find someone who has done what you want to do and ask them. Ask them how they did it. And if you can't find anybody, oh, my God, my, one of my favorite exercises is to do a visualization where you go into the future and you meet up with that future vision of yourself, that person who is successful already, and you actually ask them, what can I do? How can I do this? What did you do? And um, I did this exercise with a group of people last week and the answers that came out were unbelievable and really helpful things. One of my actress clients, she said that her future self said to her, um, film everything you do. It doesn't matter if it's a tiny little show or it's a one-woman thing, whatever, film everything, put it on YouTube. And that has helped her business, um, you know, immeasurably. And someone else could have said it to her, oh, you should – you know, you should film everything. But hearing it from her future self was incredibly important. And hearing it from a role model, someone that you want to model that says, hey, I've got kids, you know, this is how I make it work. It makes you believe it as well. 
Yeah, completely, completely. And it's, it's so important because um, my first, they, they could do this, well, why can't I? But also there is, um, it just remove all the fear and all the, um, the, the wrong ideas we have about what life may be in one direction or the other. And um, yeah, it's beautiful when when you can arrive to this, po- to this point, but also when you have then a belief that this is even better for her too. And, and that's great. Absolutely. And we can come up with a lot of excuses. You know, you, you can use your daughter as your excuse or you can use her as your motivation. It's completely it's completely up to you. So the the final step, which is step number five, is it's really to live your life now. It's to um, be in possibility no matter where you are. And this can be difficult because it's being in the art of allowing it's it's living in that gap between where you are and where you want to be. And sometimes that can be incredibly frustrating. I, I know when I first learned about the law of attraction and I would do, you know, I'd do a little bit of things, do some visualizing, and then I'd be like, seriously, where's my stuff? <laughs> like, where's my million dollars? <laughs> Where is it? And it can be frustrating when your current life is very different to what, what it is you want. So in this stage, it's about how can I make my life beautiful? If I want richness in my life, how can I appreciate the richness I already have? And I like to get people to do this in very small increments. So what can you upgrade right now? Can you upgrade um, instead of for women, instead of you know doing your hair at home, going to a hairdresser, upgrading just a little bit in one area? Um, upgrading the food that you eat just a little bit. Tiny little increments means that you are constantly in a space of being happy and feeling satisfied where you are, but still having a big vision for your life. And that can be, it can be tricky, but I find that it's, um, it's about treating your body, physical body beautifully can really make a, a, a big difference. It's, um, dressing yourself in the best clothes that you have now. It's using your favorite cup instead of saving it for guests or saving it for best. It's about using what you've got right now and making it feel great. Um, And again, that really helps when you surround yourself with positive things. There's no point feeling frustrated and feeling the lack. And we've, we've all heard this from the law of attraction stuff. You get what you already have. So that's why a practice of gratitude is incredibly important in that stage. It's, um, you know, how am I already really, really rich? And being very clear on the fact that you are very wealthy. And yes, universe, you want more of it, please. I think, I think it's interesting what you said about um, uh, not keeping your best clothes um, for, for a special day and really using them now. And I think that this is something I never heard before. But it, it's true that, um, uh, I don't know for, for you in Australia, but uh, when I was a little kid, um, we kept our Sunday clothes for Sunday, you know. And they were always pristine and they were always in, 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 the, in the wardrobe. And I think this belief, a lot of people are still carrying with them. But it, we should just use our Sunday clothes every day and just feel the best possible. Yes, because that helps you believe that you deserve more. And it shows the universe, I deserve the best. And um, what I find is when you sacrifice and you live in a space of, well, I don't deserve it, um, then that's what you get. You, you make things harder for yourself. And I, I don't recommend that people go out and, you know, spend money that they don't have on things. But you, even if you have to sacrifice in one area – you know, you give up um, cable TV, for example, so you can afford better food and make that, make it beautiful now. And what I find is you can upgrade little areas of your life until it actually gets to the best it can be. So, for example, with, um, with food, you might make a decision that I'm only going to eat organic, but you start off just saying, okay, well, I'm, first of all, I'm just going to not buy some of that cheap, nasty food that I eat, I'm going to just upgrade a little bit to maybe all my apples are going to be organic and then maybe my meat's going to be organic and you just go, you just upgrade a little bit at a time and actually you might get to a stage where, okay, my food is exactly how it would be if I was a millionaire, even if I had 
a lot more money, I would still eat the same um, brand of beautiful tomatoes as I would. And then you go to another area of your life. Okay, well, how would I upgrade my computer? You know, well, okay, if I was a millionaire, I would have a Mac or I would have this particular computer. So you just upgrade until until you get there. And then you go to the next area. So actually, you could find that you you get to your dream life by increments. It's that there's not going to be one massive big jump. Very few people actually win the lottery and then they just change their life completely from one to the other. So that's why wearing your Sunday best, you know, your Sunday best now could be very different from 10 years' time. But getting there, getting used to being elegant and beautiful and having things in your life work. And sometimes that's actually getting rid of things more than adding things in. So getting rid of that shirt or those shoes that actually make you feel poor, (laughs) make you feel bad every time you put them on. And it could be that you have only two pairs of shoes rather than 10, but those two pairs of shoes make you feel really great. Well, as a man, make you feel... As a man, I only have two pairs of shoes. I must be honest here. I don't really understand this concept of 10 pairs of shoes. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> but for, for a man, it could be some, some other area. It could be, you know, upgrading your hairdresser where you get your hair done. Just a little bit, you know, so it only might cost you an extra, you know, $5.00. But it's just upgrading it, so you, you become that person by increments. Another great way of, of, of feeling fabulous is um, when we get our coffee, instead of going into a place which is um, a little bit um, run down or poor or something like this, to save, uh, say, 2 or $3, is to go in a nice hotel and just enjoy the experience, even for a few hours. But having a, oh, absolutely. a good, good cup of coffee and, and in, in a lovely environment. Absolutely. When I sold out my first workshop, there was 25 people there and um, I got my hair done for it. I got my hair professionally blow dried for it because I thought this is how I'm going to go going forward when I have, you know, thousands of people in my audience. And then after that event, I went to the, because I had beautiful hair and I was wearing nice clothes, I went to the fanciest restaurant in town and I ordered a glass of champagne and some olives and it cost me like $25 $25 or something, you know, for, for just one champagne. But I sat there and I said, universe, this is what I want more of. This is what I want my life to be about is serving and, um, and rewarding myself for it. And it's very symbolic. It's incredibly symbolic. And it's all about how it makes you feel. So it may, if it makes you feel like a millionaire going to that coffee shop and, you know, then do it. Yeah, and get it, there by increments. And it doesn't really cost much, much more. It's, it's just as you said. It's, um, it's the experience. It's um, the feeling. It's looking at people. It's, uh, it's, it's being the actor of a movie that we want to be. Yes, absolutely. And you can do really fun things with that. You can, you can go and test drive the car that you want to drive. You know that doesn't cost you anything. Or you, even if you're too shy to ask for a test drive, you can go and like touch it you know (laughs) even if you're too shy to do that at the moment you can go and look at it through the window um all of that starts to help you believe it's possible yeah or or one thing i did is um um, i configure my car online it's an audi a4 and uh, i just ask them to send me by email the configuration but every time i go to my email i can see this email and i say yeah it's, it's here yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and anything you can do like that um, will make a huge difference, especially if you do many of them, you know, many of them. And when I was saying upgrade by increments, you might get to a coffee shop and you think, well, this I love this coffee shop now. So even if I got $10 million tomorrow, I would still come to this coffee shop. And so great, you, then you go to the next area of your life and go, okay, well, what other parts of life could I upgrade now? Because that's, that's where I want it to be. That's good now. Okay, cool. What else can I do? And you just slowly, slowly, slowly get there. And then what happens then? Then suddenly everything opens for you or is it that uh, it is so incremental that you don't even feel or that you will see the result that, of what you have attracted in your life? I think it's both. I think it's really important to be aware when good things happen. So if you find a coin in the street, you go, oh my God, this is great. Thank you so much, universe. 
um, and you see everything as a sign that your dreams are coming true. And it's really funny. I, I love the term reverse paranoid because you just you get convinced that everything in the universe is conspiring to help you. And actually, it's the way you see bad things too. So, um, you know, I had a little car accident last year and this was right in the middle of, you know, writing Lucky Bitch. So, I was like, should I, you know, what is going on here? And actually, I took it as a sign that the universe was saying, slow down and pay attention. And, you know, you can take that as a positive sign or you can take it as a negative sign. It's all about your attitude. But yes, when things start happening for you, what I noticed that um, is that when you are in that positive frame of mind and you know where you're going and you know what your goals are, you're more inclined to spot opportunities for starters. You'll go, ah, that's why that's coming up because I asked for it. And the self-belief that you're starting to change means that you're more inclined to take action on it. So nothing actually really happens to you. It's all just like, oh, that's an opportunity. Okay, I'm going to go for that. And, you know, from the outside, someone might go, well, isn't that lucky? And you're like, well, no, because I actually, I'm aware of that opportunity and I've got the, the guts to go for it now. Whereas maybe without all this kind of stuff, you'd go, oh, that's for other people. That's not for me. I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and when we say this is for other people, then okay, we're right. It is really for other people. You know, it's not for us. And uh, in fact, we are leaving our, our luck to to others to 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 enjoy this. Um, yes. Yeah. So it's it's really important also for us just to say, yeah, it can be me too, and, and it is me too. But what is really interesting, what you what you said here, your five steps are. are are very, very well um, defined, but it is really becoming the person who is going to attract this, I guess. Yeah, it is. And it's um, opportunities can very much pass you by, you know. So when I was living in London and I was dreaming about traveling, I told a lot of people about my goal. I said, I'm going traveling next year for six months. I'm going traveling next year for six months. And people would say, how are you going to do that? And I said, I don't know, but I'm going to do it. And um, a friend of mine texted me about the Honeymoon Testers um, competition, about the ultimate job competition. And that was the only opportunity I had to find out about that competition from one person seeing it in a newspaper and texting me about it. And if it really makes you think, okay, well, what what could have shifted there for that not to have happened? It could have been that I didn't believe that I could go traveling, that I didn't tell my friends about traveling. Um, she might not have ever have seen it and thought of me. And when that opportunity came into my life, because I'd spent almost six months dreaming, visualizing, tra- like thinking about traveling, um, I, opportunity. I went, yep, I'm going to go for it. And um, I think 30,000 people applied for it in the end, but millions and millions of people visited the website. So many people would have thought, mm, sounds good, but I would never win that. Oh, imagine how many people will be applying for that. And actually applying for it was kind of tough. Mark, Mark, my husband and I had to make a video. And, you know, doing something with your spouse isn't always so easy. Um, under a tight deadline and we were really stressed and there was times where we were thinking, this is just too hard, like we're never going to get this. And we almost didn't send in our video. And so many people would have had the same problem as us. They would have gone, oh, you know, our website, our, the website crashed or our internet's not working. We had all of those problems. And they would have just gone, oh, it's just not meant to be. So sometimes there are just so tiny little opportunities They might not be the only opportunity, but you've really just got to go, no, this is showing up because I asked for it. And that's exactly what I did. I went, we're going to win this opportunity because I can't believe how aligned it is with um, with what I've set, set, sent out to the universe. And I was convinced we we're going to win it from day one. Yeah, which, is, which is really amazing because uh, one chance of 30,000, it's, it's not a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to do the maths here, but uh, it's not a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, but can you imagine how many people just didn't even put in their, their application? You know, you've got to be in it to win it. And I don't advocate buying lottery tickets. I don't really believe in, in that so much. But every day there are opportunities for you to be, 
to put yourself in for a chance and many less people do it than you think because many people get discouraged and many people believe it's not for them. And I truly believe if we didn't win the travel competition, something else would have come up yeah, because we were so aligned to it. Completely, yeah. and, I, and I think that uh, an opportunity that never comes alone. It's, there's always several... Yeah, it's, this is how we, we learn, in fact, to, to be persistent it's because we know that other things are going to come and uh, by trying one, another, another, at some stage, um, things are coming to us. But if you give up, yes. then, they don't. Well, a, a really great mentor of mine, Karen Nola, she said that she used to go to um, Alternatives in London, which is a, um, a beautiful space where they, they bring in teachers from all around the world, like Marianne Williamson and um, John Demartini and amazing speakers. And she volunteered there and she would be at the back of the room thinking, I should be on that stage. I should be there. But she was waiting for someone to recognize her potential almost. She was almost waiting for someone to come up and go, Karen, you should be up on that stage. Why aren't you doing this? And of course, it never happened. You know, no one's going to come knocking on our door and say, you, we, we know you've got all this potential. You know, let me take you by the hand and I'll make it happen for you. And I guess that's the, the lure of, of winning the lottery. You know, we don't have to do anything and suddenly we get everything we want. And um, that's why I devised these five steps because you can just follow it step by step and really put yourself in that space where you create your own opportunities, you create your own luck, you can completely shape your reality 100%, but it takes work, it takes intention, it takes practical things in the real world, it takes sometimes inconvenient actions, but it all adds up, it all compounds and eventually, you know, you will see the opportunity that's right for you and you'll have the courage to jump on it. Yeah, as you said, it all compounds and... um it's it's funny that you call this work, uh, really the the, the the five steps and to um, to to set up your intention and and to to be persistent and continue um, dreaming and continue visualizing and um, clarifying and and clearing the clutter as as you move along, because for me also I believe that this is real work. This is the only work we have to do in our life is to get yeah. as clear as possible in in every way. So clear in the clutter way, but also clear in the vision way, and that's so important. Yeah. Yes, and it's um you can think of the five steps as a circle because what I find is that sometimes when you get frustrated that things haven't shown up yet, you can go back to step number one and you can go, okay, what else do I need to declutter here? You know, can I can I declutter something in my house? Can I, you know, declutter something in my ta- in my schedule? Can I really are there, are there more self beliefs? You know, are there, is there anything else I can uncover? And you just keep on going through. Okay, cool. Step number two, can I get even clearer about what I want? Step number three, what else can I put into my life that will remind me and align me to this goal? Step number four, what action can I take? You know, you just keep on going around. (laughs) It's beautiful. So you can never really get to a place where you just go, I'm done. I'm going to sit on my couch and I'm going to wait for the phone call. You don't have to. You can control it. There's always something you can do. No, you can you can never you can never sit down and there is always a belief or always something from our past or or even from karma if we believe in past lives uh, that are that are here for us to clear and to uh, to get clear of and absolutely and that was one thing I did I actually in my process of decluttering I went I'm going to go see someone about past life stuff <laughs> and um and I said you know what is it in my past lives that I've got that is around money that's stopping me from what's a lesson that I can learn and you know I don't know if I believe in those things literally but it gave me some really good awareness about okay well what lessons can I take from that um so that's why I say throw everything you know at it because there's always so many different different things depending on your belief system or depending on what's available to you you can always find more stuff out about yourself that's you know it's fascinating and you can use it yeah, and, and that's really interesting what you said. You said it's fascinating. Most people, when they start clearing their, their stuff, um, find it's difficult because some of them are really emotional, some are, are really deep inside us. And then they say, oh, shit, sorry for the language, but um, I'm French, so I can say this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Australian, so I love it. <laughs> so, um, and they say, oh, I have still the other things, and I have cleared this so many times and so on. But you said it's fascinating. So if you look at our clearing process, our, our, our letting go, 
as something that, like an adventure, then it becomes an adventure and it's beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why self-forgiveness is so important because um, if you just beat yourself up over it and say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm terrible with money, it's really showing the universe that you don't deserve any more money. And so you can see it as an adventure and think, well, that's interesting rather than, well, this is just another example about why I can't have money. Well, this is just yet another example about why I can't have a good relationship. It's like, oh, that's why I've been sabotaging this all along. Cool. Now I can do something about it. Um, and really to know that it's not, it's not that you're not meant to be happy. It's not that you're not meant to be rich. It's just that, hey, you've had some clutter around it. And once you know what that is, you can work on clearing it. No big deal. Yeah, I said it's cool. And uh, but also, and that's really where the forgiveness really comes in because when we start to realize that we we make the decision, and I just did a radio show last week on uh, we took we, we are taking the decision to struggle. In fact, when mm. we are taking the decision, then we have immediately have to forgive ourselves because if we don't forgive ourselves, then we're going to resent ourselves. And that yes. No, absolutely. And you can use the law of attraction for you or against you. And, um, you know, when you get good at it, when you have developed your manifesting muscle, you still have to be careful about your thoughts every single day. Because if you're not, you know, things that you think about can show up very quickly once you're good at it. So if in the moment you find yourself beating up you know, beating yourself up over something, you can forgive yourself in the moment and go, cool, let's, you know, because, um, you know, being someone who has worked on my muscle a lot, my manifesting muscle, oh, man, I have to be careful because sometimes if I think of something negative, it will show up almost instantly. <laughs> you know, if I find myself feeling fearful around money or whatever, I will manifest a, you know, a, a fine or a bill in the post like that. I have to be very, very careful of my thoughts. <laughs> well, it's, it's, um, it's, it's everybody yeah. in, 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 the, in the negative because it's so easy then to, um, because we have the evidence straight away and then when we have the evidence, of course, we kind of say, yeah, I, I really deserve this and this is what, what will always happen to me. And when you start to say always, then it does always happen to us. And uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. And you can be like, you can use that for good or you can use that for bad. It's your it's your choice. The universe really doesn't care. Um, I don't feel like I've been specially selected by the universe in any way. It's just that I know that when I'm when I work on it, it works. Um, and and you always have the control about whether it can be good or bad. <laughs> and, I, and I like the fact that you are putting a lot of reality behind this, because I I, I know from. Okay, the teachers that I know on the law of fraction who are very, very successful on my own experience, on, on my clients, that for me the, the key word is uh, congruence and uh, persistence. Because once we are starting to do this, then it is our, our work. And you are putting this so nicely that it is every single day and we cannot stop. Well, it is every day. And I'm, I won't... Um I won't pretend to anybody that all you have to do is do one goal setting exercise and that's it. You know, I would say it's it's constant, but it's it's stuff that fits into your life, you know. It doesn't mean you have to take over your whole life and you don't have to be that serious about it. You know, when someone says to me, "How do I do forgiveness perfectly?" and I say, "Well, you don't have to wait for a full moon. You don't have to get naked. You don't have to make a big production out of it. You just you just put a little bit of time aside in your day and you do it. And that's the same with all this other stuff. You know, you just you just do it. You just do the little practical things one by one by one. And you don't have to wait for the stars to align for you. Yeah, and it's very easy to justify the time that we use this because if you look at, um, as you said, if we, if we let our negative thoughts or our negative vibration attract the negativity, then we have to clear up this mess after. And this can take hours or weeks or months. Whereas if yeah. we take a little bit of time every day to be in the right frame of mind, then we don't have this drama or far less of these dramas. And that saves us a lot of time. Absolutely. And I think that's why you have to be very specific because you could say, universe, I want more money in my life. And so the next day you find a coin in the street. The universe is like, tick. And 
you know, so you have to be specific. And here's the key thing. So if anyone's listening and they think, but what if I get it wrong? It doesn't matter. If something turns up and it's not quite right, you go, huh, it turned up because I actually wasn't specific about this particular part. You can send it back. You know, if you want to manifest a man and suddenly you're getting asked on on dates, but they're all like weirdos, then okay, look at look at what you're actually asking for. It doesn't mean you have to marry them just because they've shown up. <laughs> you can go, nope, thanks universe. Thank, you know, it's evidence that you're becoming better at manifesting and you can send them right back and go, cool, I'm going to be a little bit more discerning next time. Which is great too. So, Denise, uh, our time is, is up. I can't believe this. It's already one hour. Um, so, if people want to, to get in contact with you and get the book, but first, the book is not only for women. No, it's not. It's not only for women. Um, I think anyone who likes practical law of attraction stuff, I don't go into the history of the law of attraction or the science of it. I actually go through what did I do to manifest this and what can you do like straight away. So, anyone who likes practical stuff, I think will really like the book. Um, you don't have to be a woman. Most of my clients are women, but I think I, I do attract some really lovely conscious men <laughs> as well. And um, you can get the book from you can get it from Amazon in, in paperback, and you can get it from Kindle, obviously, and um, you can get the ebook version from my website as well. But my um, my website is deniseduffieldthomas.com, and the five steps that I mentioned, um, people can sign up and they can get a, a free uh, ebook with all those steps. So you don't have to remember them. You don't have to you know sit here and take a lot of notes. You can just uh, come and get that ebook. And if people really need some help, um, because the five steps are are very easy, or simple to to say, but sometimes uh, with some help, um, it is it is it is easier to go through them, especially the first step. So oh, the, absolutely, actually. absolutely. Well, when you sign up for my free book, you'll be on my newsletter. I send out a weekly um, article, an ins- inspirational article, and I do one-to-one coaching as well. But I would say, you know, I love working with people, um, but it doesn't have to be me. I would say set an intention that the perfect mentor shows up for you. And I love doing that in my own life when I say, huh, now I want to deal with my health. And the perfect person has just shown up for me to help me work on my health. So, you know, that's what will happen for people if they really if they know that they need to work on their forgiveness or declutter stuff around money. Set the intention, um, and the perfect person will show up. But of course, I would be thrilled to work with people one to one. Great. So thank you very much, Denise, and um, it was really a pleasure to have you here today. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. All the best of luck to you as well. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.